Welcome to Counter-Strike Mapping Academy. I'm your host, Sammy Chimonahihi Aliubi. This is a vertex painting guide, one of the most powerful tools in Source 2 Hammer. In this tutorial, we will explore all the possible commands to take advantage of the blendable materials with our vertex paint tool. To find a material that can be painted on, we need to search for the materials that have blends. In your Acid browser, search for the word blend to bring up materials that can have vertex painting. The blend will be shown as a strip on the bottom third of the preview window. You can save your search by clicking on a saved search and pressing the new button to save the blend search for future reference. Apply the material the best way you see fit, using any of the UV operations that were discussed in the previous video. Vertex painting will work along the vertices that your mesh is made of. You can paint directly onto them, adding more edges to your mesh work where you would like more detail to be added. It isn't completely necessary to have subdivision in order to get your desired results. For faces that are large, using subdivision will allow you to paint across it, with higher subdivision levels giving you more control over your paint stroke. For optimization reasons, you want to limit the levels of subdivision on your meshes to the lowest level necessary. Higher levels will eat away at your frame rate. Painting across faces that are n-gons can be frustrating with how subdivision is applied when there are 5 vertices or more. You may have to re-topologize your meshwork to get the desired results with vertex painting. First, enter vertex paint mode by clicking on the icon or pressing shift V. For now, make sure the option for everything is selected, and then press and hold down left click to apply the blend settings onto the target based on the current radius and strength. The red indicator means the action will add the blend. Erase will result in removing the blend. Hold down control and press left click. This operation is indicated when the target cursor turns black. Radius is a measurement in hammer units, defining how large of a surface to paint your blend onto. You can adjust this by holding the middle mouse and moving left to right. Strength indicates how much of the blend to apply or remove on a scale of 0 to 1. You can adjust this by holding the middle mouse button and moving up and down. Hardness defines how abruptly the blend will contrast. This will indicate on the target cursor as a thin circumference to indicate the amount of feathering applied. Each channel of the material will be shown with a check mark in the box next to the name to indicate if this particular channel will be active during the paint operation. You can see which channels are the blend materials and base materials in the preview box. Selecting everything under Paint On will give you the ability to start painting on everything that has a blendable surface. If we want to paint only on specific surfaces, we can designate it by clicking on which selection we want. Selected objects will only allow you to paint on the objects that you selected in object mode prior to entering vertex painting. Selected faces will only allow you to paint on the faces that you selected in face mode prior to entering vertex painting. Selected edges will only allow you to paint on the edges that you selected in edge mode prior to entering vertex painting. Selected vertices will only allow you to paint on the vertices that you selected in vertices mode prior to entering vertex painting. Back facing surfaces will allow you to paint onto blendable materials that also have back faces. Limit to active material will only apply the vertex painting on surfaces based on your current selection, which also have their material matching your current active material. Trace against bounding box will allow your target cursor to move against the boundary box of your current selection. This is useful when using vertex painting on a static prop that has been converted into a mesh. In this example, we take a table and reassign it a blendable hotspot of wood. Disabling trace against bounding box will allow you to pan the surface of each individual mesh with no restriction. 
Show verts will provide a visual indicator on the paintbrush dimensions to show which verts of the mesh will be affected by the painting action. The red dots indicate areas where the blend has been applied. The dark dots indicate areas where the blend has not been applied. Highlight Paintable Selection will use yellow to highlight the vertices or edges that you can apply the blend operation to. Objects will have a cyan bounding box made around it. Debug Mode will show the normals of each vert with an angle and color to indicate the strength of the blend. The wider the indicator, the stronger the blend. Darker colors indicate a lack of blend. You can change the channel that you want the visualization to apply to based on the material properties. Flood Fill will fill the entire selection with the blend in a uniform paint based on the selected strength. Reset to Default will remove all the blend operations performed on the selection. Invert will flip the blended portions of your selection with the unblended portions. Blendable materials can also have a layer of color added on. This is in addition to any of the blendable material operations that were performed with the texture. Switch the paint mode to color to begin this process. Noise type will allow you to customize where you want your brush to apply the color. Selecting it to none will default the application across the brush uniformly. Selecting Fractal allows you to customize how you want the distortion of the operation to be applied. Brush Relative when checked will apply the paint consistently based on the orientation of the brush. Unchecking this will apply the operation based on the orientation of the plane. Seed will determine the random number generator and how it affects the visual output of the fractal noise. Octaves determines how many times that function is called. The higher the octaves, the more numerous the branching of the noise will be. Intensity determines the contrast of the noise. The lower the intensity, the more uniform the whiteness will be. Increasing intensity will amplify the contrast. Scale determines the size for the output of the target brush. The smaller the scale, the more detailed the output will be. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial on vertex painting. Please like, subscribe, and join our Discord for more help, participate in all of our community events, and to play our maps and games.